हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ए न्यू लेक्चर ऑन फ्रैक्चर ऑफ शाफ्ट ऑफ ह्यूमरस सो दिस इज ह्यूमरस दिस इज द स्कैपुला राइट सो वेन एवर देर इज एन इनडायरेक्ट ट्विस्टिंग और बेंडिंग फोर्स सो इफ दिस इज द ह्यूमरस शाफ्ट वेन एवर देर इज ए ट्विस्टिंग फोर्स लाइक दिस और वेन एवर देर इज ए बेंडिंग फोर्स देर कैन बी इंजरी टू द शाफ्ट ऑफ ह्यूमरस एट एनी लेवल एट एनी लेवल देर कैन बी इंजरी टू द शाफ्ट ऑफ ह्यूमरस there can be the injury to the shaft of humerus can be transverse like this it can be transverse or it can be oblique it can be transverse it can be oblique like this it can be spiral going like this in a spiral way or it can be many different types of fractures like comminuted fracture or it can be just a segmental fractures okay so these are the different types of patterns of fracture can be seen in the fracture shaft of humerus so if there is a fracture somewhere just think it is here this is the deltoid muscle okay so which is an abductor deltoid is a powerful abductor of hand or oh, sorry of arm so here whenever there is a fracture here this deltoid will pull the upper fragment the proximal fragment towards itself so as a result there is displacement lateral displacement of the proximal fragment is seen just because of the attachment of deltoid due to deltoid there is displacement of the proximal fra proximal fragment okay and the distal fragment it is in adduction it is in adduction okay and there can be a little lateral angulation also of the distal fragment so now how how does the patient come to you the patient comes to us with his hand in adducted position like this he will come to us with his hand in adducted position and then he'll have pain over the um, injury and also he will have uh, swelling over the injury and then we'll have to ask him to get an x ray and in the x ray so this is an example x ray in fact so in this x ray you will see this is the humerus but you have you can see a fracture which is seen here so this is the fracture shaft of humerus so this is the this is the one which we see but but uh, the x ray which we take should include a shoulder and the elbow it should include shoulder and also the elbow so this is the fracture it should always include the x ray of whole arm should be taken including shoulder and the elbow okay so this is uh, the x ray which we take and then after taking the x ray we'll have to see how do you manage it so most of the fractures of uh, shaft of humerus they unite readily they unite within you know very fast because if you see the humerus the arm our arm is supplied or has many bulkier muscles like biceps anteriorly posteriorly you'll have triceps and deltoid muscle will be there above okay uh, so mm, we have many multiple muscles which will hold the shoulder joint including arm very tight so even here if there is some malunion or some amount of displacement or some amount of angulation it will not cause lo lots of deformity a large deformity because of this multiaxial shoulder joint and also the muscles covered by it so malunited fractures or some amount of this uh, angulation can be acceptable so the major aim of this treating the fracture here is pain relief number 1 number 2 we should prevent the lateral angulation and distraction a lot because if you see here the deltoid which is here this is pulling out itself so lateral angulation should be decreased that is the main thing we should decrease this angulation so our first aim is to correct this so how are you going to correct it you'll have to reduce it just you'll have to reduce this joint and then immobilize it once you have reduced it there are many methods of immobilization you're just going to reduce it for number 1 for treatment 
first reduction that is aligning the both fragment uh, both fracture fragments in a line and then immobilization okay the immobilization can be done in a u slab this is called as u slab u slab this u slab extends from the base of the neck so this is the neck it extends from the base of the neck and then it goes over the shoulder onto the lateral and then onto the lateral aspect of the arm and then it goes below the show elbow under the elbow and then to the medial aspect of the arm this is u slab so it starts from the base of the neck and then goes over to the shoulder and from there it goes to the uh, lateral aspect of arm and from there it goes below under the arm and then medial aspect of the arm so this is called as u slab this is one method of immobilization this immobilization should be done and then once the fracture unites you can just remove the slab and then do shoulder exercises so this is one type and the second type is a hanging cast this is called as hanging cast so this is majorly done whenever the fractures are in lower one third fractures so if there is lower one third fractures we generally use this hanging cast where we will just uh, put a cast and then we will just hang it in uh, uh, the flexed elbow position and then the weight of this limb and the cast will provide traction this cast which is applied here that will provide traction and also the weight of the limb will also provide traction to the fracture to keep it aligned in aligned position that is hanging cast the third one is chest arm bandage so in chest arm bandage we will strap the arm to the chest attach the arm to the chest and bandage it okay this is majorly done for children less than 5 years this is done okay so this is these are the different methods of immobilization which are available once the fracture fragments align our main aim is just and just to start the shoulder exercises and start mobilization the the final type of treatment if this does fails or if this reduction is not possible and the fracture is very unstable then we will have to go to operative method the major operative method is open reduction and internal fixation orif is open reduction and internal fixation here we use intramedullary nail for internal fixation intramedullary nailing is used for internal fixation okay if if there is open fracture okay if there is an open fracture or infected fracture then you can stabilize it with an external fixator only then what are the complications the complications are whenever there is injury to the uh, proximal to at the junction of proximal one third and distal two third at this junction when there is an injury like this then there is a comp this type of fracture is called as holstein levis fracture in this holstein levis fracture this is majorly a spiral fracture here there is a chance of radial nerve injury okay how are you going to treat the radial nerve we will deal in our um, one class of neuropath nerve injuries clearly but here whenever there is uh, a fracture in the proximal one third and uh, proximal two third i'm sorry proximal two third and distal one third that is a spiral fracture that is called as holstein levis fracture which can lead to radial nerve injury so one more the other complication can be delayed union can be seen non union can be seen okay all these are the complications which are seen for the fracture shaft of humerus thank you guys for watching my lecture tomorrow i will do a topic i mean series of lectures on elbow fractures
fractures around in our round elbow so right now thank you guys for watching my lecture i think you like the new method of teaching please comment in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you